Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. So this is the first video in my Pi Game tutorial series. And in the previous two videos, we went over how to install Python for Visual Studio Code and how to install Pi Game. So when creating a game, the first thing you need is a window. And the window is used for displaying graphics. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever coding environment you want. If you want to follow along by using Visual Studio Code, I will link the instructions on how to do so in the video description. So you should already have Pygame installed. So let's do import Pygame. And I'm just going to save and run the program. We get the version number for the Pygame module and this message. Hello from the Pygame community. And if you do not see this message and instead you're getting an error, then you probably did not correctly install Pygame. So I will link the video on how to install Pygame in the video description as well. So let's start by creating a window. And when working with Pygame, the first thing we need to do is pygame.init. And this is going to set up everything for Pygame for us to use. And now let's create a window. And you can call this variable screen or surface. I just like to call it window. So here I'll do pygame.display.setMode. And this is a weird function name because it sounds like you're creating a setting, but actually this function set mode is the one creating the window. So when you create a window, you need to specify how big the window is. So in this function, we're going to pass in a tuple and you need to pass in a width and a height. And these are measured in pixels. So I can do 500 pixels for the width and 500 pixels for the height. All right, now if I save and run the program, you can see for a brief moment, the window appeared. And if you missed it, I'm just going to save and run it again. All right, so I ran it two more times and very briefly you saw the window appear. And that is because we did pygame.init and we created the window and then our program ends. There's no more code. So basically we created the window and after the program ends, it closes the window. So for that, we need something called a game loop. And this game loop is what keeps the window open. And to create our game loop, we can just use a while loop. So while true, and here I'm just going to do pass. So this while loop is going to run forever. And while the program is running, the window will stay open. So let's save and run the program. And you can see we have our window and the width is 500 pixels and the height is 500 pixels. Now you might notice that if I hover over the window, we get this spinning cursor. And that is because our window is not responsive. What we need to do is check for events. So an event could be pressing on a key or clicking on the mouse or pressing on buttons in our screen. In this case, right now I can't do anything. So I can just go to this terminal here and just press control C to terminate the program. And you can see we terminate the program. Okay, so to terminate the program, you would just go to the terminal and press Control and C at the same time. Or if you're on a Mac, you would do Command C. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this. And within our game loop, we need to check for events. So I can do for event in pygame.event.get. So within our game loop, we are going to listen for events and events could be pressing on the keyboard keys, clicking on a mouse or clicking on a button in our window. So here I'm going to check if event.type is equal to pygame.quit. So pygame.quit refers to the X button of our window. So every window has an X button to close the window. So in this case, if we click on the X button, we're going to do pygame.quit. So this is going to terminate Pygame, but we also want to terminate the program as well. So I'm going to do from sys import exit. So after we quit Pygame, I'm going to call the exit function and this will terminate the program. Now let's save and run the program. All right, so we have the game window and within our game loop, which is the while loop, Pygame is constantly listening for events. So I can press some keys on the keyboard or I can do some mouse clicks. In this case, we did not write any code to process those events. The only event we process is this X button over here. So if I click on this, you can see we quit Pygame and we terminate the program. Now another thing we can add is a caption or title for our window. So if I save and run the program again, you can see the default name of our window is Pygame window. And I can actually change this. So I can do pygame.display.setCaption. And here I can give any title I want. So here I'm just going to do Kenny Yip Coding. 
PyGame. And if I save and run the program, you can see we've changed the title of our window. And when we're working with numbers, it's best not to use magic values. Basically, this 500 and 500 over here should be saved to a variable so that we can reference it anytime using the variable. So here I will create some game variables and I'll do game with and set this to 500. Actually, for this tutorial series, I will use 512. And I know that sounds like a weird number, but later on in this tutorial series, you'll understand why I'm using 512. And it has something to do with the map of the game that I'll be creating for this tutorial series. So specifically for the layout, I want it to be 512 pixels by 512 pixels. So here I'm going to do game height as well and set it to 512. And I'm just going to replace 500 with game width and do the same with game height. All right, now if I save and run the program, you can see we have our window and it's probably hard to tell, but it's slightly bigger. And that is it's 512 pixels for the width and 512 pixels for the height. All right, so we have our game window. And one more thing I want to go over is setting the frame rate. So typically for games, we have 60 frames per second. So if I'm playing a game and I'm moving the character on the screen, we are constantly redrawing the screen 60 times per second. And to set that, I will create a variable clock and set it to pygame.time.clock. And make sure the word clock is capitalized here. Now within the while loop, I'm going to do pygame.display.update. And this is going to update the display by redrawing on the screen. And we want to control how often we are redrawing on the screen. So that's where the frame rate comes in. So clock dot tick, I'm going to pass in 60. All right, so within the game loop, we are going to update the screen and we're going to do so at a rate of 60 frames per second. So if I save and run the program, you can see there is no visible change, but this window is updating 60 times per second. And to actually see something change, we need to draw an object on the screen and move it around. So we're going to do that in the next video. For this video, we're just going to cover the basics of setting up the game window in Pygame. So that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more Python game programming tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.